voters of Dominica, on the night of May 5th, 2005, you spoke. You trusted the Dominica Labour Party and had such confidence in its leadership and program that you gave to our party the mandate to govern this country for another five years. We were satisfied that the decision you took was based on the fact that you were pleased with the results we had delivered to you during our first five years in office. We accepted the responsibility of that mandate with humility and immediately continued the task to bring in, of bringing development to our beloved Dominica and caring for you in a manner we had been demonstrating. We set out on a new five-year journey of development together. It was not always smooth sailing for us. We had to, we had to contend with the destructive forces of nature, hurricanes, floods, landslides, earthquakes, and sea swells. They ravaged our crops, our crops, damaged vital infrastructure, laid waste churches and homes, and set back the economic advancement, advances we were making. But we did not give up. We stuck together. With sweat, determination, the proactive interventions of the government, and the generous assistance of our friends, both old and new, we replanted our crops, repaired our homes, rehabilitated our roads and bridges, re-equipped our fishermen, and rebuilt some of our churches. In spite of all the ill, Ill will of us, our critics and detractors, we completed the Windsor Park Stadium and constructed the first phase of the new Dominica Grammar School. The elegantly designed Soufre, Tartan, and Fort Saint Jean Sea defense walls have lifted the ambience of these villages. Parents, children, children and inhab inhabitants of the town of Portsmouth speak with pride and joy of the state-of-the-art Roosevelt Douglas Primary School. Together we confronted the worst that was thrown at us by a global financial and economic crisis, and we stood tall. Fiery darts of slander, innuendo, and character assassination have been hurled at us, but we remain focused on the job you have given us to do. The reward of our steadfastness has been vindicated by the law courts, steady and sustained economic growth, and an increasingly proud people, and a new excitement all over the country that is now Dominica's turn to make the great leap forward that so many generations have dreamt about. History and a future that looks promising with labor are calling on you to join the movement of endeavor to take Dominica to the next level. My dear friends, the sun has not set on the days of economic irresponsibility and fiscal gambling. There will be no return, for now you can clearly see the road to continued progress being paved by the party of choice, the Dominica Labour Party. Whether you are a farmer, fisher, small entrepreneur, single mother, student, cultural artist, vendor, huckster, tradesperson, or an elder citizen, the government has listened to you and has responded to your call for support and assistance. And I say to you, my dear Dominicans, that we intend to continue to do so. The manifesto we launched here tonight is a blueprint of how we intend to take and to bring Dominica to the next level of development over the next five years. It builds on what we have been able to accomplish during the last five years and identifies many new areas for investment that can rapidly improve on our standard of living and hopefully surpasses the targets we have set for economic growth and job creation. We are presenting to you a team of candidates who are well respected in the communities and have a strong record of service and performance throughout Dominica. Each of them is committed to be your humble servant for the next five years. Together, we must continue the journey to take our country to a level where no one goes in need of food, clothing, shelter, or a satisfying job. Dominica's future is in your hands. I invite you to be part of the making of this new Dominica. With labor, you can't go wrong. Comrades and friends, tonight we shall di dissect this document in the hope of returning to you our plan 
for taking Dominica to the next level. We have invited some of our seasoned campaigners as well as some of our new and bright talent to assist in the task of outlining the details of this document. I invite you now to join us on this journey, taking Dominica to the next level. But ladies and gentlemen, before I leave this podium and allow my other colleagues to speak, I want to address a funda fundamental matter that has been of concern to me and to Dominicans. You have seen a relentless attack on Roosevelt's carry. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say very clearly to those who are unrelenting on the attack of Roosevelt's carry, nobody in this country will run me back to Vickers before my time is ready. Because, ladies and gentlemen, this is history repeating itself. Where Libla was attacked day in, day out, night in, night out, every day, every month, every year, every week, attacked relentlessly. Simply because of his concern for the ordinary working class Dominican in this country. But nobody in this country, ladies and gentlemen, will deny the people of Dominica their rightful place in this country. And that is what our manifesto intends to do, to give the ordinary working class Dominican a fair chance to educate the children and to create that kind of prosperity for the families. Ladies and gentlemen, I know some of you have been very anxious hearing all sorts of things about Roosevelt Skerritt won't be a candidate for the Vickers constituency. Let me say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that my name shall appear on the ballot paper as a candidate for the Dominican Labour Party in the 2009 general election. Ladies and gentlemen, I shall remain very focused because I have a job to do. And that job is not easy. It is a most difficult and tiring and lonely job. But I do this for you, the people of Dominica. Because for too long, you have been taken for granted. And you, the ordinary working class people of Dominica, from the hills and foothills and valleys of Dominica and from the seacoast and landscape of Dominica must be given a rightful place. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, we have persevered to ensure under serious criticism that every single child in Dominica has access to secondary school. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, we will go out of Dominica and raise the resources to ensure we can help you to help your children educate themselves and get you out of poverty, a poverty that has stricken us for too long, ladies and gentlemen. So let not you have be troubled. Attacks will come from all sides. You who are older than me know, knew of the struggles of Ivo Libra. I heard of it. He told me of it. And his wife continues to tell me about it. But let not you have be troubled, ladies and gentlemen. With your support, with your prayers, and with your commitment to Dominica, nobody shall move us except by the ballot. But ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this manifesto, this manifesto is a blueprint to take Dominica to the next level. <clears throat> it is a document that has been developed through listening to you, hearing what it is that you want for your country, and seeking to work with you to advance Dominica's development. But nobody can challenge us, ladies and gentlemen, on the fact that this government has done more for Dominica than any other before. This government continues to listen to Dominica and to respond to your needs. I cannot understand why it is that some people in this country are hell-bent on seeking to destroy Roosevelt's spirit and to destroy the Dominican Labour Party. Every single program we have implemented to help you, the Dominica. There are some people in this country who find fault with it. They accuse me of all sorts of corruption, ladies and gentlemen. But they cannot tell you and they cannot show you one dollar Roosevelt Skerritt has taken from the Treasury for himself. I challenge them, ladies and gentlemen, to show and to prove that Roosevelt Skerritt has taken one dollar from the Treasury of Dominica. Instead, what Roosevelt Skerritt has done, that he has gone out there in the cold and his son to go out there sleepless nights to raise money to address the social and economic challenges confronting our country. That is what it is, gentlemen. But let me say to you, let us remain focused. Because the important date is December 18, 2009. Do not, let, do not listen to this propaganda in the windows, ladies and gentlemen. Remain focused on the plan. The plan and the vision 
to take Dominica to the next level. I thank you very much, gentlemen, and I will come back to speak to you after my colleagues have spoken to wrap up the discussion on the manifesto, gentlemen.